For many years, the Flat Earth community at large was in agreement that the world is a level, motionless plane, as evidenced by our common sense, everyday experience, and countless scientific experiments, including the Mickelson-Morley, Mickelson-Gale, Sagnac, Aries failure, and observable realities such as perfectly circular star trails around a stationary pole star, and the constellations remaining in their relative positions to one another for all of recorded history. None of those experiments or observations disagree with Earth moving or accelerating up. Recently, however, a few Flat Earthers have revived Leo Ferrari's old Flat Earth Society claim that the world is not, in fact, a level motionless plane, but rather a constantly upwards rising plane. These people cite experiments such as a helium balloon moving forward in an accelerating car, or a cork inside a dropped bottle of water momentarily ceasing its descent while mid-air, as proof positive that Earth cannot be a stationary plane. Not momentarily decreasing its descent, but the whole time it appears to be falling. They claim the only possible way to explain these results is to assume Earth to be constantly rising at 9.8 meters per second, or approximately 22 miles per hour, straight upwards. There is some debate amongst them regarding whether this upward motion is a constant velocity or an acceleration. It would have to be accelerating, F equals MA. A car going at a constant speed doesn't have the same effects. Only accelerating frame of references, aka non-inertial frames, do. But these new upward rising earthers have all recently come into agreement that our flat earth can no longer be stationary. These upward rising earthers begin their inquiry innocently enough by asking questions about the directional vector of dropped objects, and why dense objects fall downwards rather than upwards or sideways, for example. To this question, I would give the answer that there is a pressure gradient formed by the amount of stacked air, water, or land over you in a column, which increases the pressure, weight, and density the farther down you go, and that defines direction. If the pressure gradient was the cause of things falling, then in a man-made vacuum chamber there is even less pressure to push them down. At 128,000 feet, things still fall down, and again hardly any pressure to do that. Things fall at the same rate, if not faster, in a vacuum chamber where there is less pressure. While things like helium balloons fall up, not down, proving there is no downward directional bias. Because they are less dense, just like in an accelerating car, now flip it 90 degrees and you see the direction is now up and in the direction of the car's or the reference frame's acceleration. When things in a container with a medium in with things less dense and more dense in, things no longer work direction-wise according to RDD or buoyancy and density. Unsatisfied with this answer, upward rising earthers continue their inquiry by asking why then does earth have a pressure gradient stacked in this particular fashion? with the densest layer at the bottom, rather than the top or sides. Now at this point, I would say such a line of questioning is tantamount to asking why is water wet, or why is fire hot? It's like asking why don't we walk upside down on the sky and look up to the ground? It's similar to asking why don't our arms grow out of our pelvis and legs grow out of our torso? It is nothing like asking those questions. For one, we can change the pressure gradient directions. A change in the IV, rate of motion, causes a change in the DV, pressure gradient. As anyone who has spent significant time with a four-year-old knows, the question of, but why, if asked long enough, eventually leads to an infinite regress of explanations that can only be ended with the true, but potentially unsatisfying metaphysical answer of, it is that way, because that's how it was created to be. No one argues that that's the way that it was created to be, but it still must have a mechanism to cause it to be that way. Rather than accept that Earth was simply created to have the particular arrangement of density layering that it does, Upward rising earthers instead claim that Earth must be a constantly upwards rising plane, and that this constant vertical motion is the only thing that can explain the directional vector. Now, while this could make for an interesting speculation, the fact of the matter is that dropping a water bottle with a cork in it, or watching a helium balloon go forward in a moving car, are not demonstrations of the Earth constantly rising upwards. At best, these demonstrations provide tangential evidence for their line of questioning, but in no way prove their assumption that Earth is a constantly rising plane. If they provide evidence, then why are you going against demonstrable evidence? As explained with the independent variable and the dependent variable, it shows acceleration to be the cause. Is the scientific method no longer accepted? In fact, upward rising earthers are forced to pile assumption upon assumption in order to defend their new dogma. Assumption number one, their first assumption, in order to answer the question of directional vector, going against all common sense, our everyday experience, and countless scientific experiments proving Earth to be completely motionless, they make the grand assumption that Earth is constantly rising upwards 9.8 meters per second. It is not an assumption, as explained, it is demonstrable, and as you yourself said, is evidence. Motion is the only way you can physically demonstrate and recreate pressure gradients. You assume it is stationary. That is an assumption. Assumption number two. In order to have a world that constantly rises upwards forever, they are now forced to make a second assumption, which is that there exists an infinite expanse of empty space above our flat Earth, 
for the constantly rising world to rise into. Perhaps, perhaps not. Besides, do you think the creator is beyond creating that? Meanwhile, you are forced to make the assumption that stationary Earth is hung on nothing, floating in space, or on pillars, which are then on what? Which is then on what? Which is then on what? Infinite regress. Assumption number three. Next, they are forced to assume that the entire atmosphere is somehow fixed like glue to rise perfectly along with the upward rising Earth, because otherwise, the upward rising Earth would constantly be crashing up into the bottoms of birds, planes, helicopters, and everything else in flight above the forever upwards rising Earth. And that is what is experienced in an accelerating container. If it's all being pushed upwards, you would have exactly what we experience with gradients and vertical vector. It would recreate what we experience exactly. And frankly, there is no other viable option we can recreate. Assumption number four. Finally, they are forced to assume that the sun, moon, and stars are also all constantly rising 9.8 meters per second, somehow fixed along with the rising atmosphere. Otherwise, of course, the upward rising Earth would crash into them as well. Well, they could be attached to Earth's dome or container. If Earth is rising, why wouldn't they be? You are forced to assume that Earth is stationary, but everything else is moving. What experiments prove a stationary, non-vertical moving Earth? You too must make assumptions. The difference is we have evidence, as admitted by yourself. Where is the evidence Earth is not moving up? So rather than accept the order of density layering on Earth to simply be as it is... So don't question it, and don't even try. Wow. Upward rising earthers prefer to ignore their common sense, everyday experience, and countless scientific experiments proving a stationary earth. And which of those experiments show that the earth is not moving upwards? In order to make assumption upon assumption upon assumption upon assumption fourfold in an attempt to answer their inquiry. Your assumptions have been shown, and again you admitted we have evidence. Not to mention scientific method. Changing the motion changes the pressure gradient. Since upward rising earthers claim the earth, the luminaries, the atmosphere, and everything in it are all constantly rising together, there is no way for an experimenter to actually step outside this reference frame to confirm or deny their supposition. And this shows the ultimate futility of the upward rising earthers' entire argument. Since no one can escape earth's reference frame in order to observe or measure this supposed vertical movement of the earth, its atmosphere, and all the luminaries, there is no way to verify or falsify the hypothesis. You cannot leave the reference frame to show it is stationary. So stationary Earth, by your logic, is futile. Therefore, when questioning the directional vector of density layering on our flat Earth, you can pile assumption upon assumption to arrive at this speculative and unprovable conclusion, or you can simply allow reality to be as it is. You have offered nothing other than it just is. Meanwhile, we can use the scientific method to show that a change in the IV, a change in the motion, causes a change in the pressure gradient, the dB. You've also admitted that we have evidence to an upwards moving Earth. Buoyancy and density, or RDD, only work when attached to the reference frame. They do not work when they are allowed to fall. This means that you need a magical force to accelerate things down at the same rate when falling. Which means that this force must have different strengths for different things. Meanwhile, only one force is needed to move the reference frame up at the same rate. Also, accelerometers show the acceleration is up, and that there is no acceleration when an object is falling.